that the New Advent Catholic Encyclopedia refers to the Sacrament of Reconciliation as the Tribunal of Penance. Interesting. The Tribunal of Penance. And it might seem weird. I mean, have you ever heard this term applied to the Sacrament of Reconciliation Confession, the Tribunal of Penance? Seems weird, doesn't it? But if you think about it, confession is actually a judicial process. We have elements of the court system within confession, the sacrament of confession. We have the accuser, the person who points the finger and says, he did it. Except that in the case of confession, you are pointing the finger at yourself. <laughs> right? You are the accuser accusing yourself. And so you stand as the accuser. You stand as the accused, the person being incriminated in this crime against God. And not only against God. Our sins, they, they offend God. But they also affect civilization. They affect the human race. You go out, you commit murder, it's a sin. And that act affects not only the person whose uh, life you've taken, but it affects that person's family, those who knew the person those who suffer loss because of your actions right and so your sin affects civilization it affects the human race much like we have it in civil America right much like we have it in the civil system Murder, civilly speaking, not only affects the person whose life you've taken, but it affects that person's family, civilly. And so we have laws, civilly, against the act of murder. Within the church, we consider murder to be a mortal sin. And that sin affects not only the person who commits the sin, that person's soul, but also the person whose life you've taken, the persons who are family members or were family members of that person, they are all affected. And so your actions, your sin, they affect not only God, or offend, I should say. And they affect not only you personally, your soul, but they affect civilization. They affect humanity. But you stand, you stand in the confessional as the accuser, the person pointing the finger. You stand as the accused, the person being incriminated in the act, in the sin. And you also stand as the witness. And in many cases, when you commit a sin, you have others who witnessed that sin, perhaps. But in some cases, the only witness to that sin, to that action, is you. If you, let's say you're a kid, you lie to your mother... Your mother perhaps doesn't know that it's a lie. And so the only person that knows that you've just told a lie is yourself. And so you go to confession, you confess this sin, you confess this lie, and you are the only witness who is privy to this crime being committed, this sin 
being committed. And so you stand as the accused, you stand as the accuser, and you stand as the witness. And then you also have jury, judge, the person who hears your case, the person you plead your case to, which happens to be the priest, right? And so he stands as jury, he stands as judge, he evaluates your case, and he administers a sentence. He administers a penance. And so confession is a judicial process. You have all of the elements we might find in a civil court. You have the judge, the jury, you have the accuser, you have the accused, you have the witness. And so you have a judicial process within confession. And civilly, the way in which you atone for your crime against humanity is that you have to do penance, right? You have to do penance. You have to fulfill a certain sentence, whatever it might be. It might be time in jail. It might be a fine. Whatever the judge deems to be the appropriate atonement for your crime, right? The appropriate penance for your crime. And we have the same in, in confession, right? You have to do penance in order to atone for your sin. This is the teaching of the Catholic Church. This is how you remedy your sin. This is how you remedy the action that you have undertaken against God. There has to be penance. You have to do penance. This is one of the three requirements, actually. You have to be truly sorry for your sins. You have to commit to the idea that you will never commit that sin again to the best of your ability. Obviously, we are all sinners. We stumble. We fall. And sometimes we commit the same sin over and over again and again, right? And so, to the best of your ability, you have to commit to the idea that you will never commit this sin again. And thirdly, you have to do penance. It is a requirement. In order for that confession to be valid, you have to do penance, right? And we have the same thinking in the civil process. Civilly, we have that same thinking. Some penance, some sentence has to be fulfilled in order for atonement to be achieved. 